Woohoo! Silver Humvee. Johnny Magic here at, uh, yeah, I'm here. So today, I, I forget what step this is. Um, what step is this, Steve? What, what step do you, what, what step should we call this? Step four, isn't it? Is it five. step four? Five. Somebody told me on the way back from California when I was driving that they needed the rest of the steps for the Humvee conversion, but I'm not sure. Okay, we're gonna call this step five of the ultimate Humvee Duramax conversion. Um, can't remember what step four was, but I can tell you about what it is that we're getting ready to do on this one. So what we've done is, I believe that pretty much at this point, we stepped into the electrical. Um, and of course in the kit, you're gonna already have this modified harness and it won't have the old uh, X109 connector on there. It'll already be terminated. But uh, since this is kind of our newest version, we, left, we always leave string lines on things that we're doing. But uh, they've went ahead and separated the, you know, the power, you know, this is these pink wires, these are switched ignition, the red ones, um, these go to battery. Um, of course, this black one is ground. So it's pretty simple. You know, you're going to get something like this, um, and it will be terminated, um, and it will be cut to length. You know, it almost looks like they couldn't, they didn't have to extend it. But uh, anyways, these are the learning curves of the growing pains associated with, you know, doing this. But uh, I like what we have going on here. We've come up with this marine grade. It's a uh, a three circuit uh, fuse center um, and this allows us to put all our switched ignition on one circuit, our battery on one circuit and actually our ground. So this comes our central distribution for everything you know that you need as far as power and stuff and also it'll have, aux it'll have auxiliary ports so if you got something extra you want to put on there, a flux capacitor, whatever, you can put that on to this, this, this center and it has a waterproof cover It goes on the top of it and stuff like that. So you know ECM is right here, comes with the bracket. Uh, we supply that in the kit, uh, bolts down to the firewall or footwell, the top of it. Um, this is your TCM that comes with your motor that you buy, or if you buy the motor from us, you're gonna get this TCM, and uh, it all plugs in there. And uh, you know this will be connected to there. And then there'll be a central distribution. Um, it looks like they're in the middle working, but these are the, the original ca cables coming from the uh, Duramax engine. This is the LMM, by the way. And these you'll cut down and it'll go to a distribution block that'll set here. So you'll have your main power and ground coming in really simple. From there you can jump off and feed you know, systems like this or whatever that you need to feed. So that's the electrical side of it, pretty simple. Um, also on the electrical, there are a couple wires that look like this uh, that you'll pass through. Uh, inside the vehicle and they, they're your, what we call your CAN wires, 2500, 2501. Those are going to go to a DLC port. We're gonna, we supply that DLC port um, um, and that allows you to be able to plug in the, uh, the, the handheld uh, tuner that we supply as well. That's a communication back to the engine. Allows you to remove the security. It allows you to set your performance level, your tire size, all kinds of stuff. It also allows you to uh, diagnose this vehicle. So for in the uh, likely event that you had a failure or something like that, you could actually plug this, this tuner back in there and see what code it showed. It might show like a you know, a 700 or P700 code, which is a transmission fault, you know. So it's really detailed, and that's the cool thing about the modern technology. I get a lot of people calling and saying, yeah, you know, I just really want a more simple mechanical motor, you know, type of application. I'm like, why? You know, I says, I could tell you, here's what happens. A mechanical motor is great, if you have spent the last 10 or 15 years of your life dealing with that kind of mechanical motor because then you kind of know what's going on and what to look for. However, uh, that's not, that's an unlikely case. You know, you're gonna be an end user that has no, you know, real gifted skill with that specific motor. Um, so there's no advantage whatsoever. I mean, because older motors, it's a guesswork. It's a guess thing. Is it the injector pump? Oh, I think it is. Yeah, listen, change the injector pump, $3,000. We changed that, and you know what? That didn't fix the problem. Well, it could be this. And, you know, $5,000, $6,000 later on a diesel motor, you've replaced pretty much everything. You finally find the, the spark plug that's loose or whatever. You know, something simple always works out like that. So the cool thing about the newer motors, it tells you everything that you need to know about what's going on and what 
failed within that motor. I mean, even down to, you know, like slip issues and stuff like that with transmission, fuel pressure issues, all that kind of stuff. You can, you don't have to be, you become an expert mechanic with this, this handheld tuner. It's kind of like having a, a Tech 2, like a GM uses, you know, and their technicians have all this sophisticated information to them. Now you have it in this little handheld download, and I believe me, if there's any problem that you have with a Duramax um, and any code that you see, you can just turn around, pick up your cell phone, and uh, you know, go in there and Google, uh, you know, P28 code GM Duramax. Boom! There's going to be a hundred people out there talking about that same problem. So it's it's beautiful. I mean, now the World Wide Web becomes your mechanic, and you have the tools and resources to be able to figure it out on your own. So love it. Um, back on to the electrical. Uh, you also get a wire that looks like this with the plug-in that looks like this. This goes to the throttle pedal um, and of course in the kit the throttle pedal uh, you know uh, does we don't supply the throttle pedal in the kit if you buy the drivetrain from us we'll supply the throttle pedal however we do in the kit supply the throttle pedal bracket it's a bracket that allows you to adapt that throttle pedal from that whatever donor vehicle that you got your drivetrain out of um, to be able to install that so those are pretty much your majority of your wiring things that you'll be doing. There is a little bit of a um, um, interface uh, as far as uh, power and ground back to uh, what we call the, the factory dash or whatever. And, and this one actually is getting the upgraded dash version, but uh, what we've done is we, we've added the upgraded dash version to the center section of this, which so is going to be really cool. So we're changing out all these gauges that are currently on the, the original IPC. So instead of having this style of gauge, you're going to have, uh, well, gauges like this. We like these. Uh, they're made by Autometer. Very accurate. It allows you to calibrate uh, the tire size, uh, you know, anytime that you want. If you change tires or whatever, you know, you can change the tire size just with the gauge instead of having to go in and get your download or upload or whatever load and change all that inside the computer. You can just change at the gauge. So those gauges will fit back into the original position and stuff like that. Um, and on this one here, we wanted to keep the form fit function of the original part of the dash over the driver's side with the original uh, controls for the, the wipers and the, well, the, the lights and, you know, and this one has ignition switch on it and all that kind of stuff. Pretty cool. But the new dash is going to run off of this. Um, it'll be a two-tone black, the uh, stainless and everything. Um, it'll allow you to do a, a touch screen interface, doubled in uh, style. Uh, um, radio system. You can integrate the speakers into that if you want, six and a half. Um, it also would allow you for, if you wanted to add an auxiliary, we sell an auxiliary uh, heat and AC system, um, or we sell a whole big unit to replace the original one, you know, which honestly I don't think you need it. I think the auxiliary one that sets into our, our console system um, would be great, but uh, you know, you can always add that later. Uh, in this case, he didn't choose to go with the AC um, system heats fine. He's up east, and of course he's very excited about getting this Hummer back. And I apologize, sir. I told you that we were ready to drive. We're not ready to drive, but we're still playing for Hummer. <clears throat> so bear with us on that. I know that they've been doing uh, soundproofing. This one here is getting a level two soundproofing and stuff like that. So those those are the kind of the works that are going on um, at this point. I probably. You know, I'm going to say midweek, we'll probably be up and driving. We'll have the dash in there, have the seats back in, or the doors back on, the soft top. Everything else is pretty much done. We've just, we slowed down a little bit and re-engineered some of the pieces that we normally use on our civilian version. We've adapted to the Humvee, uh, which, you know, is going to make it uh, even more user-friendly uh, and cooler, you know. So I love that. Cool is great. So Johnny Magic here at uh, eCharger Systems. EMJ, well not EMJ, we're at E-Chargers and H-Line Conversions. We'll see you guys.